I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 6th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we are showing off the Colonia Universidad. That is a small community on the southeast side of the city, just east of Fundesi, east of the gas station, as people call it, the Uno, as you come into town where the uh, Pan American uh, alternative turns into the Leon bypass temporarily to get past the east side of the city and head on up to Chinandega. So this is a little area on the Managua side that is well worth looking at because it's an interesting community, something completely different the other side of the city than I normally show you and a key area of interest for people who are looking to move uh, into Leon and want something quiet and relaxing. We'll get to all that right after the bar. or the bottom, depending on how you look at it, of Colonia Universidad. Colonia means like community. It's like smaller than a barrio, but bigger than a residencia. And it does not mean gated like a residencia does. So it's like a small neighborhood that's part of a barrio or outside of a barrio. And we're far enough out from El Centro that we must be in a reparto, but I don't know which one. We are right next to Fundesi. Perhaps this is part of Fundesi, or maybe Colonia sit outside the repartos, but are big enough to be named, but small enough not to be a reparto. I don't know. That's where we are. It's Colonia Universidad. I'm going to show. So this is Nicaragua 3, the Pan American Alternative, which is about to turn into the bypass right behind me. Uh, Managua is that way. The city of Leon is that way. I'm going to show real quickly. This is Parque Ruben Dario all the way across here. And that is the new stadium going up right over there. So if you're in this part of Colonia Universidad, you are going to be able to walk in seconds over to the new stadium, which is going to be fantastic for you baseball fans, because that is going to be a great place to see baseball. You know, point out the sign here. Uh, first of all, there's always a Pizza Hut sign here. So if you need a landmark, for some reason, they don't use the park across the street. You think that would, because that's kind of permanent. No, 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 everybody says buy the Pizza Hut sign. I fear that someday that's gonna change. People tell me it'll never change, but I fear someday there's not gonna be a Pizza Hut banner there and no one's gonna know how to find this, this Colonia. Uh, so uh, we've got a Zumba sign, but then this is the sign for the actual university after which the Colonia is named. It is the Universidad Martin Lutero, or Martin Luther University, which is back in the Colonia itself. It's actually a really beautiful area to have a university. So this area has some student housing and some professor housing and people who just want to live near a university, which can be fantastic. We live in Sutiava, right by a university. Guadalupe has the other universities, and then El Centro and Primero de Mayo have them that I know of. There's so many universities in Leon. We are, it is our number one export is education. So you get universities everywhere and it makes for some really nice communities. Uh, it's, it's the claim to fame here and partially what makes Leon such a famously liberal city and the first capital of revolution. All right, I'm gonna show right here. So this is an apartment building. I'm gonna walk around it a little bit. Uh, this is, I believe, student housing um, or at least apartments designed for students, but I don't really know. They have this nice uh, gated courtyard here. I'm sure this is very affordable, like extremely so. Uh, most likely things like this tend to be beautiful trees. It's a nice street. This is a very hot day in the rainy season. This will be a lot more green um, and ignore the bag in the tree. But we have nice houses throughout this neighborhood as we walk in. <clears throat> here you can get a pretty good look at what the apartments look like. And it kind of looks like a hotel, right? It's a very, very standard sort of uh, in America 1970s apartment building, but it's well painted and in a nice area. So this is, this is pretty nice. Everything is very dry and dusty right now. Oh, they have a nice garden behind there. I don't know if you were able to see it. Uh, so that makes it, everything's a lot more brown than it will be. We are right at the end of the dry season. In fact, it's a little bit late for the rains to come. So we're we're suffering a little bit from how hot and dry it is, but we're getting there. Buenas tardes. So we have a house for rent here, just for those who are interested. Anybody, really, University, uh, Colonia University of that is very popular with people that I talk to who are looking for houses down here, uh, who don't want to be focused on the beach, but want to be potentially closer to Managua and want a kind of uh, more upscale, safer area, very quiet, uh, but with easy access to the highway, it becomes very popular to be out this direction. So we have multiple people, uh, including friends who live out here that we're gonna have on the show very soon. Um, they chose, well, a lot of our friends are out here, in fact. So, and we have a nice pharmacy right here. 
And as you come into the community, you have this circle. The sign has seen better days. It's a lot of concrete and a fountain that hasn't been running for a while. Like many developments here in Nicaragua, things are not as good as they used to be, which is very sad. Uh, but this is a cute circle with potential. And that is a curved house on the circle, which is pretty cool. That place has a lot of potential to be a really neat place if you really fix that up and, and put in a bunch of plants and decorated like that curved front and style and everything. Very European. So I'm just going to step into the circle here. This really needs lights and a fountain and it would be fantastic as it is. It once upon a time had grass and no one has been maintaining it. So that's very unfortunate. That kind of stuff makes a big difference. Right over here on the right, there's a tiny little community park. It's like a, a basketball court, and then there's a park behind it. We're gonna walk down there in just a minute, uh, but first we're gonna just come around the circle. So this is, actually I should show it again. That is the main drag of Colonia Universidad, and that um, gate all the way at the end, that is the gates of San Andreas, the Residencia. So we can't go in there today, but we're gonna walk down that main drag. There is another street, which we're probably not gonna go down over there, uh, but there is more than we're, we're going to show you today. There are side streets throughout this community. And uh, this is looking from the circle out towards the road. All right, we're going we're gonna to move some equipment and get down there so we can do walking down that street. There's a lot of fantastic stuff to show you. All right, I ended up having to run some errands while I was switching between locations for the show. So I have run the kids back home. I am back out in Colonia Universidad, and we are starting from down a side street, which you can see a little bit here. The sun is getting a little bit low, so I need to change my plans a little bit. I'm out for a walk. I've got the camera on wide so you can see more than you normally can. I'm trying to minimize my own roll in the show and get a little bit more of stuff uh, that you guys can see. I'm going to head towards, I'm, I'm at the top, uh, kind of the north end of, of the Colonia right now. And uh, because of the way the light is, I'm going to head all the way up to the top at San Andreas. And then I'm going to kind of zip back down the other direction and work my way back. Hola, buenas tardes. So that you guys get kind of the best look of stuff uh, as I go. Otherwise, you will end up uh, with bad light. Got to do the best that we can, but I think we got a nice walk today and uh, it's not too, not too long. This is, this is not bad. So we just came down from this side street. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit, actually quite a lot. So the circle is down this way where the sun is coming from. We have this open field over here behind me. Actually, we're going to get that horse. Oh yeah. Horse turning around in the street. doesn't matter how upscale of a community you're in. You've got horses and horse carts all over the place. We have this kind of open field and beautiful orchard, clearly a place where a lot of great stuff could go in in the future. And we're going to show some of these absolutely beautiful houses. I'm going to get a little bit closer. This one has a yard or something on the side or a new house could go in. I don't know. This is a beautiful modern house, very large. All of these are quite large. And I love the styles out here. Buenas tardes. So this is technically, while it's part of Colonia Universidad, it is also part of the Residencia Las Palmeras. Uh, but this is not a gated uh, Residencia. It is a open Residencia. But look at the style on this. Absolutely gorgeous. These are pretty amazing. I don't want this van in the way, so we're going to get a little bit closer on this one. So love this style of wall. The yard is beautiful giant houses. Some of these people have walked by and said they're like an entire block deep. These are not small houses in any way whatsoever. This is kind of an alley, but the road between the houses. And then this was open space over there, right? So this is where we just walked past. And then another house, I have no idea what this one is like behind this big wall. So many of these are hidden that it makes it tough. This, another is a great, quiet neighborhood, every single house. Very, very nice. This would, this particular area would remind you of a slightly smaller version of Fatima up north. And it kind of mirrors it in its position on the southeast side of town. So not, uh, not too surprising that that is how it ends up. So I'm gonna move real quickly so you can see. So this on the corner, we're getting a little bit closer because this is available for rent or sale. So I assume when they say 
that it is not the empty spot, but the house there. They're probably putting up the sign so you can see it uh, because renting an empty lot would be weird. There's not very many houses down here, just one or two and a dog down the street. And you can see that it goes into kind of empty down there, but that is the city right there. So it's not empty for very long. What we have in front of us is the Residencia San Andreas. They call them the condominios, but it is a Residencia, it's a gated community. And this is actually where Alan lives. So we're hoping to uh, be able to get a tour there at some point. But this is like serious gated. You'll show there's someone, there's multiple people working security at all times. They always know who's coming and going. Uh, they check your ID. Like it's very high security compared to some places where uh, the gate is, is a little bit less. And you can see some beautiful houses down the side street as well. Now this neighborhood only goes about one block in each direction. So this is a very small neighborhood. Now I'm going to turn the camera around so the sun is on me as I walk down. We're going to hoof it a little bit because we don't have a lot of time for the light, so we'll talk about it as we come back. It's, again, just a small neighborhood, but it's cute with absolutely phenomenal houses. The majority of the houses here are mansions. Um, these I would all expect to be, you know, five to, to 12 bedroom kind of things. Like this is seriously impressive neighborhood uh, with very new construction. And even smaller places on the very far back side streets. And I'm hoping we're going to be able to film one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film it today. Obviously, I'm not going to show it to you today because we're doing this. But I've got to physically film it within the next 24 hours or so, or I'm not going to get a chance. And I don't know if we're going to get to do it today. It seems unlikely. So very likely, I'm going to have to work really hard to do it tomorrow. If I do, I'm going to be able to show you what I believe is a seven bedroom. It's a lot of bedrooms. Maybe it's only five. It's a lot of bedrooms with a pool, uh, a lot of space in this neighborhood. Uh, that's a really, really great house for a reasonable amount of money. It's currently 500. They're now asking six because they did a bunch of upgrades to it. And well, I find it unlikely they'll get six, but you never know. Uh, and, uh, and that's way off on a dirt road on the side. These houses on the main road are so much fancier, so much bigger. Like this is such a place to be. It's incredible. So uh, hope you guys are finding this interesting. I love this neighborhood. We found this neighborhood when looking for houses for Allen, um, boy, over a year ago, because it's been, I guess I, I tell from, uh, I, as I put up the episodes on the vlog, I go back at the end and I set up the, uh, the, it's called the end screen. If you guys stay to the very end of the show, a couple episodes will pop up as recommendations. And normally what it is, is if I don't set anything, it'll show the episode that YouTube thinks is best for you. And it'll show the episode most recently made on the show. I'm not sure what it does if you're watching the most recent episode, but it shows something current. Uh, and for a lot of these now, I go back and I make it, instead of showing something current, I tell it to show the same episode from one year ago, because we have an episode for every day. So if today is the, uh, uh, I don't even remember what day today is that we're recording. I think I said the 6th. Uh, if we're recording the 6th and we go back, then it'll be May 6th, 2022. And I can tell from that how long it's been since we did certain things as we go by, because the light is going to show some of this. Another good size house here. Notice how far back it goes over there. And then on this one side, it's mostly just a wall, but actually that's worth showing for a second. But a whole bunch of beautiful houses down the side street. Absolutely. But look at this wall. This is important. This wall is all one house that we're about to show you. Okay, not, we're not going to go inside. We're going to show it from the outside, but that is, that is a huge amount of space, absolutely huge. And then I'm gonna quickly turn around. This is just an open field on the other side. So I'm gonna come over here so we can really get some scope on the size of this house. And you can see there's something, it's like a, I, I don't think that's baseball over there. I think that's soccer. I think it's a smaller soccer stadium for the university. Now let's come back around. Now you can see the house. So we came from that alley over there. It goes way, way back. And then it has this massive frontage. I mean, massive. And as we go by over the gate, you can see the structure of the house behind it. So there must be like this big circle in front. And those are guard towers on either side. That roof on uh, where it comes down, you can see there's windows there. That's, those are guard rooms on both sides 
those are not really slits for arrows there, but they, they kind of look like it. But that is hardcore, amazing house right there. And then this one is kind of the same, different style, absolutely. Mauve, I think, I, so I'm colorblind. I don't know how many of you know that, but sometimes people will watch this stuff. I say, oh, it's mauve. You'll be like, um, dude, that's gray. Well, let me tell you, it's all gray to me. So I'm guessing, right? <laughs> Just so you know, you're not like proving me dramatically wrong. You're just proving my point that I'm dramatically colorblind. They have these cool steps and this cool outdoor living room inside the gated area. This is a very Central American thing and it's cool having, and this is one of those reasons why people, you know, Americans say, why do you have so much outdoor gatage? Why is there so much wrought iron protecting the house? Well, it's because things like this, you want an outdoor seated area, but you want it to be, you want to be able to leave a laptop out. You want to be able to leave your cell phone there. You want to be able to just come and go and feel completely secure yet be outside. That is why, because they do stuff like that. And it's perfect. It's really, really nice. Now they've got kind of a cool yard going on. I don't think they go back as far as the other one. I'm going to turn a little bit. Another side street full of cool houses. Neat house on the corner here. I'm going to try not to get hit by the cars because I am in the middle of the road. And uh, this house kind of has a park along it. Very different style. Again, so many different styles. In Nicaragua, you never know what you're going to find. So I'm on an intersection, so I got to turn around. So this house is inside a wall. The outside, they went for kind of a blank wall, but beautiful trees and like garden around. So neat way to go. That reminds me a lot of Costa Rica or Guatemala, where it's a little bit cooler. Another beautiful street here. We're much closer to the older part of, of La Colonia, so uh, uh, Universidad. So you get stuff that's been here longer. I believe that is a door into the university down there at the end. And then a number of nice houses along here as well. And every so often there is an empty spot. There is a place where you could buy an empty lot and build something completely new. That is very much an option in this neighborhood for sure. Got a colorful one here. It'd be easy to tell people where you lived. Look for the uh, the bal the balcones. I believe there it's it's the balcony, and I believe that's the balcones. There's a, there's a use of that word that I never get quite right. It's something like that. Uh, okay, so over here again, we'll show. This is the side of a house. The front's over there. But look at these beautiful trees and stuff out front, this great yard. They have this really nice edging, so the yard is raised up just a little bit. And then this beautiful green one over here, like really, this is like Fatima, where every house could be in Nicaragua Architecture Digest. That's not a real magazine, I made that up. With just beautiful layouts and styles, everything's different. You just never get repetition. You never get tired of looking at houses in Nicaragua every single one is beautiful and interesting in its own way. I mean, okay, there's some that are not beautiful, right? But they're all unique. It isn't cookie cutter. That's not a thing. The United States leans so heavily towards cookie cutter, right? That's like the thing that makes it American is being one McMansion after another that are nice, but they're always the same. Just like the restaurants, so many chain restaurants, it's the same over and over. But here in Nicaragua, the restaurants are unique. Uh, the houses are unique, the architecture. Now this is the park, the kind of the community park here. You can see it a bit. There's a playground, nice grass. This is quite a nice park for the area. Buenas tardes. Gorgeous house here, great trees all of the design through this neighborhood. Absolutely fantastic. And a lot of this would remind you of what you would also see in a neighborhood such as Los Robles in Managua. You're going to get houses like this, not this big. Getting houses this big in Managua would be very prop, just, just outrageously problematic, right? There's, there just isn't lots that often that are available at these sizes. But look at the frontage, some of these. I didn't mean to go down a side street, but these houses look so good. I had to come down and, uh, and check it out. I would love to go door to door and get a tour of every house. Like how fun would that be? And there's a park bench down here at the end of the road. That's so funny. Neat gates, lots of sprinklers. 
Buenas tardes. Hola. <laughs> and then we're back to this. This is kind of the alley that connects them all together, but somewhere along here, oh, you can see there's an apartment building just through over there. Uh, there's kind of the end. And then way down there, my car is parked on this little dirt alleyway. So that's how I'm walking uh, where I walked from when we started. But here we go. See the other side a little bit more. The light's a little bit better over here. But these are great. Even the smaller ones, quite quite nice. And, and I don't think I've seen a single one who didn't have, uh, maybe that one with all the color, like the house was less interesting, but they took the time to make it colorful and interesting anyway. But the rest of these, each one, each one, like just the way the steps are done here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but these cut in steps with these extended railings that kind of grow up from the ground. It gives me this vibe of like very high end suburban Ohio, 1960s. All right, this place, oh, I'm loving the style. The red and white bricks with the wrought iron, the tree, the lawn, the see-through window into a garden space behind this interesting wall. Wrought iron crosses for, for security on the, on the windows. So nice. And you'll really notice like house after house, the manicuring of all the trees is pretty extreme. Like there is a consistent vibe. It varies a bit. But the vibe is pretty consistent throughout the neighborhood. And this is worth pointing out. There are very few neighborhoods anywhere in Nicaragua that have what we call American style sidewalks. But that is where, <laughs> let me describe this so you understand what I'm saying. You have this treed area, you have the road, a treed area, then a sidewalk, sometimes cut in, right? So this is actually a little bit lower. And then again, something over there. Normally in Nicaragua, especially in the, in the cities, your, uh, sidewalks are going to go right up to the road and that's much more space efficient but it uh, it leaves something to be desired from a usability standpoint and and it's not quite as safe i love a lot of the corners are are, are curved very cute i'm gonna show the park again as we come by every park in nicaragua the benches are painted a variety of colors that is just celebrating Central American heritage. It is the, the palette of colors that, uh, that make it Central America. And then the pink, that is, that is the pink of Nicaragua. But the rest, the rest are just the standard Central American colors. Now this park is a little bit less interesting than it could be, but it is a, a nice little spot. It's nice that the kids in this community have you know, it's simple stuff, but it's the same things that we had a uh, very difficult time finding when I was a child, right? It wasn't like I could go out to my local neighborhood and had those kinds of things, and I wish we did. Uh, it would be, that would have been great, but uh, we had them, but it was a big deal to go use them. Now, we do have a house here. It's still in a great area. Like, this is fantastic for sale. So we're going to grab a little bit of information here. Now, I wouldn't call that number but this location is fantastic. Uh, I know of no one who's ever called that particular number and not ended up very, very sorry of all numbers you could possibly call. I'm not gonna, not gonna say why or who, just I would not call that number under any circumstances. But, uh, now see, I saw a sign down here. Just wanna see what it is. You can tell where each street, we get a little bit more mature on the trees. Ah, yes, this one's for sale or rent too. Look how deep the wall goes. So it's right against this basketball park. Like this is nothing to write home about, but there's some benches, there's some basketball. It looks messy, but it's also the dry season, right? This will this will clean up some, the trees will get better. And uh, it is what it is. But so this, I can't tell. I believe this is all one house. This one is the garage side. And then here's the house side that looks like a by owner uh, sign. Another great location. This is Kitty Quarter to the other one that's available. And it has a pulperia, a cute pulperia right next door. Place to recharge your phone, grab a beer. And we're just going to go a little bit, see what's here. There's a little bit of life going on. Oh, there's a construction crew. I wonder what they're doing. Let's investigate while we explore all these super cute houses. Super, oh, that one's got deep garage, 
goes right into like a courtyard. Again, the, the great variety in style. How you park a car? Do you park a car? Do you have open space? Is it all house? Is it, there's so many ways that you can arrange the houses. And, and not that you couldn't in the US or Canada, but you don't. The houses are just way too the same. And you would never do something wildly different. But here in Nicaragua, you would constantly be like, wait, I don't want a house that works that way. I want to live in the back of my house and have a garage in the front, or I want the garage to be along the side, right? Like this, completely different. Or I don't want a garage at all. And you can do whatever you want. There's another pulperia here on the corner. Get your sodas or whatever. Okay, this is interesting. So I'm going to pop out here just a little bit. Get our bearings. A little bit wacky. Okay, this explains some things. Okay, so this road goes to, that's Ruben Dario. I'm sorry, that is not. That is the Pan American Alternative. That's Nicaragua 3 up there that we see the cars going down. So that's where we are. We're on the edge of Colonia Universidad. There is a McDonald's billboard up there, so we can figure out where that is pretty easily. More houses along here, this loud uh, uh, front end loader going on here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. For one, there's like a, it might even be a farm back there that's kind of been taken over by the Colonia. Now we have this dirt road going off to the right, which at some point we can come explore. No idea where this goes. I have not checked this on the map. This area is seriously weird. So I've spent some time driving around down here and ended up in some truly wacky places. So be aware, if, if I haven't walked it, don't try to guess what's there. It gets wild in some cases. So there's a road going there, but dirt. Then there's this middle road where these folks are walking right here. This one's paved and goes through another bit of neighborhood full of houses and stuff. I don't know if that's still considered the Colonia or if it's a different one, but it is a looks like a nice little spot, but it's separated from these others. Now, this dirt weirdness going on here, this is the road, we'll call it. I need to air quote that road. I hope you see that, uh, that my car is parked on that we started on. What a weird spot. Now, look at the house on the corner. Or I think it's a house. Tiny, tiny little green thing straddling. The, it's the Flatiron Building of Nicaragua. What? What is this? So these first houses are super narrow. And then just a little ways back, I know they turn into uh, front to back houses where there's houses on this and houses on the other side. So our friends have a house facing that dirt road. But here is the houses on this other paved road. And uh, that looks like a business down there, but it may just be a house. But these are this is a seriously tiny little triangular wedge house here at the I mean, look how tiny that is. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Weird. Weird. You never know what you're going to find. Okay, we're going to head back this road again. And try to make it to the circle. I hope this gives you a pretty solid feel. Some pretty amazing spots. Now, I don't have the first clue of what houses are going to cost down here, but we do know the really big house with a pool that our friends have been renting for the last couple months, they have not been here for long, was about $500 a month, and again, unfurnished. And I know in the condominiums San Andreas that we showed pretty, pretty close to the beginning, I went through there over a year ago, and at that time there were at least three identical small three-bedroom Definitely small, but very comfortable, very nice, designed to be air conditioned. Um, I think some of them had air conditioning already installed for that price, not furnished again for $350 a month, which is fantastic. Now, a lot of people are going to want furnish furnishings. That's going to cost quite a bit more. If you're coming to Nicaragua and you're truly temporary, I think that uh, renting furniture, getting a furnished apartment can make a lot of sense. But I think if you're planning on staying, maybe not your first month, but once you, once you gain confidence that Nicaragua is a place that you're going to want to be, then I think having uh, your own furniture becomes worth it really quickly 
because I'm getting pretty sweaty out here. It is warm, even though the sun's going low, uh, because you get to pick out what you want. You get to treat it well. Uh, you can move it from place to place. It gives you a ton more flexibility of where you might want to rent. And when you buy or decide to rent long term, you have stuff that you like. And if you're if you own it, it actually gets a lot cheaper than if you buy, uh, I'm sorry, if you, yeah, if you buy it, it is much cheaper than if you rent it pretty quickly. It will take, I'm gonna estimate about a year, year and a half of renting to pay for most of the things in a furnished apartment. The stuff in furnished apartments tend to be pretty cheap furniture that is used, it's just not that nice. And you end up paying month after month on it, even if you're paying one or $200 a month, that adds up pretty quickly. This is Nicaragua, you can buy an awful lot of furniture for $100 or $200 a month, 200 especially, you can buy quite a lot. All right, we are back at the circle now. Don't be confused. This looks like the same side of the circle that we started the video on, it is not. It's the opposite side. That kind of coin thing says the same thing on both sides. So those vehicles just came from where we walked up previously and they're heading down where we just walked down right this second. So you can see on that cobblestone street over there, uh, there's a couple buildings that get kind of high. There is uh, some kind of agent. There's a little bit of business here on the corner. I'm not sure exactly what it is. We're gonna turn around. So this is the house earlier. I said this curved house that was so cool. That is where we are. And there's this interesting little side street coming along beside it. And I really wanna see this because I've not been down here yet. And uh, I don't quite want to wrap up yet. I want to see a little bit more cool stuff. So here we go. These, I feel like, I mean, they're super cute, right? I feel like they're a little bit smaller, definitely a little bit older than the other ones we've seen. Now, you know what I'm going to say? Wow, perfect opportunity for, okay, you can see, not going to be huge, but you could put in an absolutely gorgeous two-story modern house right here to your specifications. And look at this beautiful one next door that did exactly that. The place is gorgeous. Two stories. Look how deep it is. Even though it's not that wide. Oh, this beautiful garden out front. Great garage space. Great second floor garden with a huge outdoor living room. Oh, bay windows or bay style windows. The gorgeous. Okay, and they got a little pulperia right across the road. Also very cute. I love. So those, those uh, circular brick uh, structures. That's what we have at the restaurant at Pirates Point. I love them. They're adorable. It's such a look. And of course the battery died. I hope I'm all the dogs are barking at me now. Hopefully I managed to get this beautiful house and my explanation of it before, uh, before all that died with the empty lot here. This gorgeous house. I'm going to assume because I saw it turning off as we came down here. So we ended up saying, talking about the uh, circular pillars there house and then I wanted to come over and show this awesome place when we get out of the glare here love this stone wall beautiful tree now this is just a wall we have no idea what's behind it every wall in Nicaragua what does it hide no idea because things are not cookie cutter always left wondering I do not know what kind of fruit these are if anyone knows put it in the comments I want to know this appears to be I think that is a growth on this palm tree. I do not think that is part of the palm tree, but I really, I can't tell. Maybe that's, maybe that's a natural. What is that? It's not coconuts. Uh, I, I gotta look that up very, this is blue agave. Obviously, oh, this house is fantastic. Beautiful walls, beautiful balconies, very modern. Hope you're able to see it on the video. Great style there. A little more classic one here. I'm gonna step out, see what road we come out on. I think this is gonna be the same road. Yes, so this is, that's Nicaragua three, right there. Got a big culvert right there. And then that's the road we were talking about just a little bit. Now, here we go. Open space, beautiful corner, quiet corner, great access to the road. If someone is interested in building potentially a really big baller place or something small and reasonable, you could do something super cheap here. If you used a bit of yard, I mean, super cheap and nice, right? If you did a smaller house, 
and had a nice yard. You could put uh, what a lot of these places do is they have these beautiful outside walls, outside gates around it, and then have a beautiful garden inside, but that's very inexpensive and something you can do over time. Um, and so you can be very affordable. Or you can put the whole thing as a house and have a lot of space inside your house and have it be obviously much more expensive because you're doing a lot more construction and do it that way. That house across the way, you can see there's a smaller house behind with an with a outside wall at flush at the edge of their property. So you have that front garden area that's so beautiful, but you don't have that massive construction cost of building a house that covers the entire property. So that's a really common way to go. So you could vary here from construction that probably would be little more than say $40,000 to easily putting in a house that's more like $300,000 and very on the lowest end from being just a small little conservative house with a beautiful yard, but both of those going for something truly beautiful uh, or having a giant mansion that's two stories tall that uses every inch of that space. And uh, yeah, you just, have, you just have so many options. Beautiful tiles, plants, you can be as wild or conservative as you want, all in the same neighborhood. But I do ask you guys, always come and improve the neighborhoods that you move to, right? That's, which is, you know, it kind of goes without saying, that's true for any neighborhood anywhere, but there's something about coming to a, a place like Nicaragua, you have an opportunity as someone coming from another country with potentially deep pockets and foreign income, come and whether you're, you're building something new or you're taking something that's old or you're just moving into an existing house, which is a lot of times the thing to do, look at it and say, how can I improve this lot and the community it serves, right? That is, that is our challenge as expats moving into any community, right? We have that mandate, spoken or not, to find a way to add our improvement to the community that we're in because and this is important to remember when we move into a community we take away something we take away a continuity of culture uh, and that's a problem now if you're moving into a giant place you're moving into downtown managua you get an apartment and a condominium whatever no one's going to notice you're a, you're a drop in the bucket of culture and it's not a factor for anybody <laughs> whatever you come to a place like Leon, you buy a house, you move into a community, you are altering that community. You are changing the number of people who are serviced by a local pulperia. You are changing the number of people who attend the local church. You are changing the number of people who sit out and have conversations in Spanish on the sidewalk with neighbors. You're changing the number of people who invite other neighbors over for dinner or whatever. You are changing the dynamic of the neighborhood. And it's not because you're doing it on purpose. It's not because you don't like the lo local culture and you want to do something else that is not at all. What I'm suggesting, what I'm saying is that simply not being from the place, you're bringing your own common ways of entertainment, your own friends, your own activities, your own shopping and all those things. And that's fine. Nothing is wrong with that, but you're taking away from the culture of a place. And we, we can't avoid that, right? We can attempt to minimize it to some degree, but we can't completely avoid it. And that's the danger of finding a beautiful place. Let's, let's say Colonia Universidad. What if all of my viewers decided this is where they wanted to be? Well, I actually have more viewers than people who live in Colonia Universidad, right? Like, I, it would be amazing if one of my viewers actually decided to move here. So it's not really a problem in real life. You, if you're watching this, should not avoid it because you think that's going to happen. That is not going to happen. But we have over 3,300 viewers. This community probably has less than 800 people. So if all of, even a small fraction, of my viewers moved in here, it would completely change everything. The stores, the restaurants, the legal services, the playgrounds, the public services, everything that is done here, everything that is provided, all the businesses that exist, all the things that the neighbors do, the way that they interact in their neighborhood, all of that would change overnight because the traditions, the culture would all be very, very different. I don't think we looked down the street before. There's what looks to be an apartment building. It could easily be part of the university down at the end of that street. We'll have to investigate more of that stuff sometime in the future. Today is too warm and the light is getting light. It is gorgeous light though. 
I hope you guys can see this on the video just how great this looks. It is kind of a sunset light coming across the colonia here. It's wonderful. The temperature's not as bad, right? Because the sun's not as intense. So this is really a nice time for a walk. But I haven't had a chance to have a meal yet today, so kind of wishing I had a pizza or something, but uh, but we're getting a lot of video done today and I'm very happy about that. Sorry if we're backtracking and doing a bunch of stuff that we already did, but this is such, such a beautiful neighborhood. I wanted to give you guys kind of this view from the other side as we come back. There's what looks like some empty, empty, empty space on this particular block. It is possible that some of these really ritzy houses may own the space next to them and just want it to be treed because they want the quiet or whatever. This is that corner place I pointed out. Totally different style. And then this giant house against them that made it like a wall and oh, so orange. Neat upper balconies, ooh. People working, so I don't want to be too evasive, but oh, check out the whole style. Open front garden wrap around balcony thing oh it gives me a morocco vibe oh, really really big look how far back that goes it's like a what hola buenas tardes what a cool design interesting i was not not guessing that at all not at all then much more traditional here oh this one is a cul-de-sac how is that even possible given where the roads are I don't know why, but this gives me a, a vibe of Germany. Oh, that tree and driveway totally give me the vibe of Germany. What is going on? That's a hummingbird. There's no way you see that in the video, but a hummingbird is went all through that garden. There's normal birds here. Oh, and cute doggies. Cute doggies. Oh, no, this is... This is the road I'm parked on. It's just a really rough portion of it. Don't drive down this road. Do not do it. You can just barely make out my car down there a little bit. Okay, we're not gonna walk that way. So this, I don't feel like this is intentionally empty. I think this is just unsold. But you can see how enormous the property is next door. Like that's crazy big. I've triggered all the dogs. You've heard of the dog whisperer. I am the dog triggerer. Wherever I go. And then this they made into like a yard. I wonder if the neighbors just were like, we don't want this to be ugly right here and made it nice. This place is just so cool. So cool. And on this side, it's just an orange wall. Such a funny, funny decision to have made. We're gonna design our house to be completely one-sided. The other side, just a wall, but very orange. Buenas tardes. Now, oddly, the sidewalk vanishes for the length of this one house. But then it picks up again and then vanishes again. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But clearly this house is like no sidewalk for us. But I'm pretty sure they're supposed to have one. Buenas. A bit closer this time as we come by. While I'm walking down, I want to remind everybody that if you'd like to support the channel, you can help us out in so many ways. Most importantly, just remember to subscribe, like this video, tell your friends about it, share on social media, all that kind of stuff. That, that's so important. It goes so far. I know there was a great discussion almost a week ago on Facebook 
about the channel. People were talking about it. Like that's fantastic. That's getting people out there talking about it and being like, this is, this is where stuff happens. That is so cool. I don't have Facebook, so people were telling me about it. So I have no idea how much of a discussion it was, but it's so cool that that happens. And, uh, and thank you to everyone who's involved. That kind of stuff goes so far. And then if you want to do something more direct, you want to actually, you know, participate in helping out the channel in a, in a very concrete way, we have uh, an account set up with Buy Me A Coffee. Just go to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That's spelled like my name, A-L-A-N. A lot of people write to me and uh, misspell my name. Not a big deal. I don't care. Uh, but it's funny how many people call me Allen when my name's Scott Allen Miller, and then how many people misspell Allen, but it's written everywhere. It's totally cool. <laughs> Not a thing. I had a job that once required to call me Allen the whole time because they couldn't figure out how to call me Scott in the system. Very, very weird. You gotta stop and wait for this truck being weird here. He's never heard of a K turn. That's cool. Maybe he's practicing backing up. And, uh, just go there, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, and you can. Another empty lot, by the way. No sign on it, but pretty sure you could build there. And uh, you can donate a coffee to me. Each coffee is $5. Donate one, three, five, ten, whatever. I'm pretty sure today is the last day of our competition uh, where we're getting matching. Anyone who sees this on the day, uh, and, and I don't know if it'll get extended, so, so feel free to try it later. Uh, but if you buy ten coffees or more, which I know that is a lot, but... Some people have already done it, and anyone who does, if you donate 10 coffees this week, uh, Mr. Anonymous is stepping up and matching that donation. So we really want to hit 10 people who donate 10 coffees, uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to put this earlier on in the video, so sorry for being repetitious, but this is big in today's last day officially at least. Uh, if you donate 10 or more coffees, he's going to match 10 or more coffees, and our goal is to get to 10 people doing that which is enough for us to get a new camera and, and cover our expenses uh, for the month because it does cost money to do this. It isn't free. I'm happy to do it. I love doing this. I'm not complaining in any way. Another empty lot. We did show this one earlier. And uh, completely different houses down here. You notice the style changes just block by block. What you get is so different. And, uh, but it would be really great. I want to get, I really want to get a new camera that's going to make more vlogging more easy. Oh, that is a cute dog. A little bit loud. You're a little bit loud, but you're cute. You're not so loud. You're not so loud. Neat style going on here. They definitely went for something eclectic. I like it. And uh, very salmon over here. Coral, maybe? No, I think salmon. And, uh, and then notice there's a few houses. Mostly this is the back alley wall of a whole bunch of places. But there are some sneaky houses right there. Three, I think. At least two that come onto this street, and then this dirt road just goes back up there. This is the only passable portion of it the whole way. Completely, completely unexpected. Never, never what you're thinking it's going to be here in Nicaragua. Always interesting. I love doing these walks. I love showing it to you guys. Please consider supporting the channel. And if you're interested in help with relocating, looking at houses, uh, just need a conversation to talk about things, need a tour guide who's gonna take you around. Obviously that's a bit more intensive, but you want a tour guide that's gonna take you around the country and show you different cities, neighborhoods, take you on walks, take you to restaurants, whatever it is you need, go check out beaches, find hotels, navigate Managua, whatever. We would love to help out. We are Relocate Nicaragua. You can check us out, info at relocatenicaragua.com. We're working on the website, but it's some ways away. Our web design girl does have a laptop again, so she's back working on it. She had a, she had a leaky roof and it leaked into her laptop. That was fun. And um, so we're, we're gonna get that up as soon as we can, but expect it to be at least a few weeks yet. Uh, but email us and we're gonna do our best to get back to you. We are very backlogged on that. We are doing as much as we can to catch up. It has been a crazy, crazy week of work just all around. But thank you for everyone who is supporting us in one of many different ways. And as always, just tell your friends, let people know about the show, like it, and I will see all of you tomorrow.